Hello, welcome back to So Into That. This is your host, Caroline Chambers, and I am really excited for this week's episode because it's a personal friend episode and those are really fun to record. As you will hear in this episode, Carly is a friend of mine from UNC, but we really have become like internet friends, as I like to call it, since graduating. She was a year older. We were in the same sorority, but like had different groups of friends, always overlapped, but you know, never knew each other super well in school. And then since graduating, we both ended up out in California. Not a ton of us do, us like UNC gals, not a, not a huge exodus to California. So we both wound up out here working in careers that are very different um, from each other, but also just very different than what a lot of our friends have ended up in. And we've just kind of found ways to like support each other through the years, just like by following each other on Instagram. You'll hear a very sweet story about the ways that Carly has supported me at the end of this podcast. Um, And just this really nice note that she sent me many years back. Um, But Carly is an incredible guest because she works such a unique career. She and her husband, Stu, are running Naomi Osaka, the famous tennis player and all of the other things that Naomi has become, style icon, mother, advocate for mothers, uh, for maternal health rights, for so many things. As you'll hear in this episode, she doesn't love to be called an advocate, but we'll get into that more. Naomi is just a really interesting and cool person. And Carly and her husband, Stu, Stu is Naomi's agent, her sports agent. And Carly, through Stu and Naomi's relationship, has just kind of been working with Naomi over the years in different capacities. And now today her official role is that she is Naomi's creative director. Naomi works on so many different cool projects, whether it's with Bobby, the formula brand or collections with Nike, Naomi's own brands. She has so many different things going on and Carly kind of runs all of that. And so this episode is just a really interesting, I don't know, I love being a voyeur into other people's lives and watching Carly throughout the years, like sitting at a Skims dinner beside sandwiched between Naomi Naomi and Kim Kardashian or um, at the Australian Open with all these fabulous people hosting parties out in Indian Wells with all the incredible sports people that you can ever think of at the Super Bowl watching Carly's life um, and career and she's now a mother of two unfold has just been so fun because Carly's such a cool awesome person and I know that you guys will love her as much as I do so here's Carly Carly Phillips do good is here Carly is a friend from Chapel Hill born and raised North Carolina and she has been living in Los Angeles for 10 years. 10 years. We're in 2024. For 10 years, um, she has a really fascinating career, and she recently started a, an agency, a sports agency. Is it called a sports agency? Yeah. Or could non-sports it. people yeah. be under your umbrella? Sure. Uh, sports for now. Yeah. She and her husband started a sports agency, and I thought, I need to get Carly in a room to tell me about all of these things. She has been working with Naomi Osaka, who is one of the most famous female tennis players of our age, who I love. Uh, I am. I talk about my love of tennis on this podcast a lot, so you all know I am an extremely amateur just lover of the game. It is how I get my kicks, my alone time, my you know space away from my children. I love it. And so when I started actually watching tennis, Naomi was like my person. And then suddenly you were popping up in pictures with her. And so we just, I want to hear about working with Naomi and I want to hear about your husband. But first let's kick off with hearing what you're into right now. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh the, I feel like this is like, oh. I want like a really LA answer out of you, but I also recognize that like you have two small children. So we might, you know, that's might not be where we are. <laughs> um, Oh, that is not where we are. I wish, <laughs> I really wish it was. And that is in my future one day. It, is it not really right is. Now. You have such a cool life ahead of you. Um, What am I into? I would say right now I feel like I'm into, this is not a very straightforward answer. Great. I feel the, like the more curvy, the better. <laughs> I'm into, I think, embracing the pure chaos that is my life right now. I think 
I so I recently had my second child. Yeah. He turned four months yesterday. Oh. Um, and my four year old just turned four the week before that. Oh man, um, four years, four months. And That's I think real. I know, right? <laughs> We're in it. So cool. Um, as are you. Mm-hmm. I think that when I had my first, it was I had in February 2020. Mm-hmm. Two weeks later, everything shut down with COVID. The world, my world, and the world were rocked. Oh, that was a real crazy time to have a baby. Mm-hmm. February 2020. Yeah. Okay. I had no idea what I was doing Mm-mm. as a mother, but also just like in the world. I yeah. think there was so much fear and so much anxiety and unknown and like you know what's happening to all of us I think the chaos of all of those things so having a new baby being a first-time mom still trying to work at the same time still trying to figure out what on earth is happening all of those things I think like sent me into a very dark place that Mm. I've thankfully never been in before I think I had terrible postpartum depression that I did not realize until much further after the fact when I came out of the fog and realized where I was yep. while I was in it. It's like you can't see the forest for the trees type thing. Yep. Um, and you just think it's normal. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's normal that I wake up 10 times a night to check his breathing. Yeah. This is normal. Mm-mm. Yeah. All of those things I think were really hard. And the chaos of all of that kind of like made things worse. I, I hated not having control. I hated not knowing – where my day was going to lead between like taking care of a baby, but also needing to be in different places for work or on different calls or be answering to other people. Yeah. But, you know, having this other person that needed me and all of those things, I think that was a test and was really, really hard. I think mm-hmm. this time around, I have just kind of changed the mindset a little bit of like trying to – um, welcome the interruptions. Oh, I think that like in any given day there are, you know, as the day goes on, there's so many things I'm supposed to be working on. And inevitably every single thing that I'm supposed to be doing gets interrupted with a phone call not pertaining to what I'm working on or a baby crying that I need mm-hmm. to go tend to or a school pickup that I need to get to mm-hmm. on time or a sick kid who has to be picked up early. A sick kid that's unexpectedly at home uh-huh. or a dinner that needs to be made uh-huh. or whatever it is. Like there are just, I think traditionally I've always like thrived on efficiency and being able to like get through things as efficiently as possible and knock it out, yeah. like be super productive. And now that looks different. Yes. I'm still, I, I would maybe say I'm even more efficient than I used to be because yep. I have to be. Yep. But whatever I'm doing is constantly getting interrupted. Mm-hmm. And I think I used to see that as a stressor. And I would feel like my lack of control and the constant interruptions were just like, I didn't have a handle on things and it was too much and I was drowning and like all these things. Yeah. Now I think I see those interruptions as um, positives because I think whatever the thing is that's interrupting me always means that like there is something else going on that is a good thing. A crying baby means I have a healthy baby at home who needs me and that's a great oh, thing. Carly, this is such a good answer. A diff- Like a yeah. phone call, you know, coming in while I'm on another call is because somebody else needs me for something, some other project that I'm working on that I'm really excited about. And those are all good things. If I yeah. wasn't having those interruptions, it would mean that I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing anything that, uh-huh. that, gave me a sense of purpose and all of those things big or small are purposeful things in my life and I'm trying to welcome the fact that even if I'm in the middle of something and I like really need yeah. five more minutes to finish it or whatever and I'm getting interrupted like it's those are that is fine and yeah. I will get to it eventually and those are all like positive things to be interrupted by yeah and make you a more interesting person, which makes you better at whatever that thing that's being inter- interrupted is. Yeah. I think we like – I'm just saying we both went to boarding school. My study experience, like what we were told to do to study was like go into a, you know, small room, like a study carol at the library, like close all the doors, put your phone away, don't bring your friends with you, like silence, quiet – And that was, like, the efficient way to study. You just, like, crushed. And then, like, college, same thing. Like, you sit down, you crush. Even, like, in a normal workplace, which you and I have not had for many, many years, 
they sit in their cubicle, they put on their big headphones, they crush work, and yep. we are not in that space. No. Like, you work from home a lot, right? Yes, we both. Yeah. And I both oh, work from home, which yes. is also, that's a whole other story. That is a whole, we'll get into that. <laughs> yeah, and when you're working from home, it's such a gift to get to be around the kids all the time, but it's also complete mania. Yeah. I love that reframe of, like, what a life well lived if I'm being interrupted by yeah. all these things that matter all the time. Yeah. Fabulous. So into that. <laughs> Do you want to hear my so into that? Please. I'd it's love to. so good and vain after yours. I was like, I want to come up with something really LA for Carly. And this morning I woke up early to go do hot Pilates with my manager. <laughs> Oh, that is the most <laughs> LA thing I have ever heard. I, li- I like texted that sentence to my friend, and I was like, "Push, push me off a bridge if I ever say that again." He was like, "What do you?" I was like, "How do you work out? Like, what do you do for exercise?" He said something about exercise, and he was like, oh, "I'm obsessed with this." He was like, "My wife makes nonstop funny. He ha- he has a wife, and he does have lots." George, <laughs> no, not only George, but also just like. Somebody who does hot Pilates might not have a wife. They might have a husband. Fair, and yeah. He has a wife. And he was like, my wife makes so much fun of me, but I go to this like – it's Silver Springs. Have you heard of it? No. I'm obsessed. Okay, the Pilates so, studio is the called Pilates Silver Springs? Hot Pilates. It's called Silver Springs. It's on Melrose. Okay. Is that a place? I mean, again, very L.A. <laughs> it's of on you. Melrose. Of course it's on Melrose. It's right beside the great <laughs> – I don't know where it is. <laughs> um – and yeah, so that was my morning. So I just thought I gotta share this LA moment for with you. Yeah, you do. That's I'm I'm into that. It was so good. I love it. it I'm happy so for good. you. Welcome. Woke up at six a.m. and like every person in there was just so beautiful and oh, yeah. topless. Mm-hmm. You know, it was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, you're not wrong. We need to understand kind of where you started, I think, to get to where you and Stu are today with Evolve. So give us some background. I think maybe as much as I want to only focus on you, we have to hear about Stu's relationship with Naomi to understand how you plugged totally. into yeah. it maybe. Yeah. So part. kind of give us give us your background oh, on how you got here. I don't want to give you too much. Where do I start? Give us the goods. So Stu and I met in a bar. Yeah, we want to hear about Stu. In uh, 2010, it was like last week of UNC – undergrad for us so he's from scotland yes he is he was a corporate lawyer in london for two or three years absolutely hated it yeah um wanted to be a sports agent and therefore took advantage of the law degree and ended up doing a one-year like an international sports law conversion program that duke has Oh, my god! So he was doing a one-year program at Duke, and his younger brother, Jamie, who we also actually work with now as well, uh, was doing a year of study abroad undergrad at UNC. Come on. So Stu had come over to fabulous. hang with Jamie one night. We were all in the same bar. My favorite part is now when people are like, how'd y'all meet? I'm like, we met in a bar. It feels like the old-fashioned way now. Because, like, 100%. I'd, Whereas at the time, like, meeting at the bar was embarrassing. But now meeting at the bar is, like, cool. Chic. <laughs> <laughs> not on the internet. Yeah. In yeah. The bar. yeah. <laughs> um, like, dating myself by not yep. d- aging myself by <laughs> yes, not yes, having yes, met someone yourself. on the internet. Yes, totally. Um, we missed that. We met at a bar. As cheesy as it sounds, it was, like, the rest is history. I, we have not spent a night apart since the night that we met. Since the night after we met. First night we met, he walked me oh. home, asked me if he could come inside. I said, absolutely not. Scottish man. Nope. I did not know you. Um, <laughs> sent him on his way, saw him again the next night. He again walked me home, asked if he could come inside. I said no again. Said he desperately needed the toilet. Big fat liar. And then that, that got him in. <laughs> um, but the night that we met, I had a boyfriend. <gasps> called the boyfriend the next morning, broke up with him. Stop. <laughs> Like is I this an actual romance book? Oh, I knew. Yep. <gasps> so we met like very end of school. He was. Oh my god! You broke up with your boyfriend the day before graduation, or whatever. That is yeah. love. Yeah. Oh my god, I love. It was, there was no other way. I love this story. Um, I'm so glad we took it all the way back. We <laughs> <laughs> keep going. We he was on like a student visa at Duke. Okay. Um, <gasps> and was gonna get basically yeah. deported back to the UK if he Booted. didn't get a job and a yeah. job visa before the end of the summer. So he was studying for the bar all that summer, trying to get a job, doing something in law in yeah. the US. 
And I think it was like a week before he was going to get sent back. He got a job working for a sports agency in D.C. So we both moved to D.C. <gasps> I found a job in D.C. He started working on this charity tennis tournament with, with an eye to yeah. become an agent eventually. But this was just like a foot in the door. Did you move in together? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a blackout year. I mean, I was still at UNC. <gasps> totally did not know all this. Yeah. <gasps> like, immedi- again, like, immediately. Again, it was all just. It was like puzzle pieces. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so about six months into that job, tragically, one of the agents at Ligard Air passed away. Wow. And those players that he had represented were evenly distributed amongst the other agents at, at Ligard Air. And so as part of that, that Stuart took on uh, a Polish girl, last name Rodwanska. Okay. Started managing her. Um, and he kind of was like, she was his first, Mm -hmm. uh, top 10 client and then continued to climb. Yeah. Um, made it really deep in some slams, grand slam finalist, uh, deep in some slams. Yeah. That's what, that's what they call it. That's the lingo. (laughs) Um, and so then once he was, you know, kind of learning the ropes, managing her, then he took on more clients. I think at one point he was probably managing... Seven, eight, nine players at a time. Uh Um, And then, so we were in D.C., I think, for three years. Ligard Air said, we have an office in L.A. We'd love to move you there. We were both ready to get out of D.C. Yeah. I quit my job in D.C. We moved to L.A. He had the exact same job, exact same company, just based out Uh of L.A. Um, I found a new job when we got here. So that was, I guess, that job sort of, like, got me started in fashion like when I now when I look back on my career I just say I come from a fashion background that was probably my first yeah 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 fashion related job um so I quit that when we moved to LA and when we got to LA I took a job at Saint Laurent yes as their VIP coordinator so I was basically handling any VIPs celebrities people of note that came into the Rodeo Drive store oh my gosh that is speaking of things that are LA didn't know I, that was very a job. LA. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, it. I learned so much from that job. I also I bet had a passionate hatred for that job. I bet. Um, but I'm so grateful for it yeah. because I think it taught me a lot of like what I know now about client servicing. Yeah. From a sports management perspective yep. or a talent management perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like having celebrities, for lack of a better word, come into that store and. You want to make them, you want to be the yes person. Mm-hmm. You want to make them feel like anything they want, you can get it. Yeah. If you don't have it in the store, you'll have it there the next day for them. Yes. Would they like champagne? On their front doorstep. Throw all your shit on the floor. Don't worry about it. I yep. will clean it up when you're gone. Yep. Like it is, yeah. you make everything seamless for them. Yes. And I think that's a lot of also what you do on the business side mm-hmm. now in talent management is mm-hmm. like, even if there are dumpster fires happening mm-hmm. all behind you. The client doesn't need to know that. Mm-hmm. Like, they see the end result. They don't need to know what happened in between to get you there. Yeah. Loved being at St. Laurent, being in that atmosphere. There were so many awesome things about it. I met a ton of great people yeah. through it, obviously. Um, but I knew long-term, like, it was not for me. That was not what I <laughs> wanted to do. Um, Stu had actually left Lagarde Air and moved to WME. A huge agency, like, one of the biggest talent agencies in the world. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They do everything from Global. sports to movies. People like me. Models. To, yeah, yeah, models, movies, all yeah. of it. Everything. Um, so he had moved to WME, I think, at some point during that process, after the move to WME, he had seen Naomi at a tournament. She was a 17-year-old. Oh, Nobody knew who she was. God. Um. And I think the story, as he tells it, is that he was walking past the courts and he heard the sound of her ball coming off her racket and was like, who is that? Stop. Um, What? He just, like, always knew that she was going to be great. Um, And she she and Stu and I always laugh. We, like, kind of took her and her dad, like, on a date-ish to a Clippers game here in L.A. Cool. As, like, our first meeting with them. Yeah. Um, we didn't know her. She didn't know us. Like we, it was, it was like was it was 17. awkward. It was awkward. Yeah, like she was a, all of us. She was were a like, child. Ooh. Yeah. 
Um, oh my gosh. But it went well. So yeah, that was the beginning of our relationship with her. And she, I think, was at such an interesting, not only point in her tennis career, but also just time in her life mm-hmm. that um, she's on the road a lot. Tennis players are on the road like maybe 49 weeks of the year. So as such, as you can imagine, she didn't have a lot of friends or people in her life who were like there. Oh my gosh. She's just on the road all the time. She's 17. She's got, you know, like a male coach and a male trainer. There's not, there's no camaraderie amongst um, herself or other players necessarily at that point. So I think Stu and I's relationship with her kind of became that. Like yeah. she very much became, and she'll tell you this too, this is no secret, she became yeah. like our daughter almost, mm-hmm. like slash my sister, mm-hmm. slash she, like I was the cool aunt or like it was yeah. a very... Um, You're 26 at this point maybe? 27? 20, I'm 10 years older than her, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. 27, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you don't have kids. You're the cool aunt. Oh, she you was her, my kid. You took her to a freaking Clippers game. You're the you're the cool <laughs> aunt. I don't know how cool she thought I was at the time. She's always been <laughs> way cooler than me, but yeah, fair enough. Um, and so we just obviously like spent more and more time with her. We were like, from a tennis perspective, we were at the tournaments with her. Yeah. We were there, but we were also spending a lot of off-court time with her, just like getting to know her and understanding what she wanted to do and helping her with you know, whatever. So our relationship kind of built built and built. And then in 2018, she won Indian Wells, which is a tournament that happens in the desert here outside of LA mm-hmm. every year. It's um, one of, it's a slam. It's not a grand oh. slam, but people call it the fifth grand slam. Okay. It's like an honorary. Yeah. It is definitely not a slam. Let's be clear, but okay. it's like the next honorary probably, slam. Yeah. Sub slam. Um, if you're going to win one that's not a slam, that's probably the biggest one. Okay, so that's why I, I yeah. have heard of it yeah. in California. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so she won that, uh, and that was kind of like, that started her on a roll. Uh-huh. Everybody kind of started to hear her name. Uh-huh. Um, you know, there was a lot of buzz around her. That would have been in March. And then five, six months later in September of that same year, 2018, mm-hmm. she had this massive win in the U.S. Open final against Serena Williams that was very controversial Oh, yeah. Which was a big emotional thing to get, to navigate through. But also, immediately, overnight with that win, she was a household name. Yeah. Everybody was talking about her. Everybody wanted her. Yes. Like, we woke up the next morning from that. We did Today Show at 5 a.m. We did The next morning? Yeah. Private jet to to New York? No, we were in New York. U.S. Open. Oh, oh, U.S. Open. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, I was still in Indian Wells in my mind. Then yeah, we went we're straight to like. And are you? You're at the Today Show with her. Yeah. You're her yeah. person, yeah. even though you don't work for her at this point yet, do you? So I should have backed up. So when she won Indian Wells in March of 2018, she was getting, uh, you know, more yeah. and more like endorsement deals, yeah. design opportunities, partnerships, whatever. So I was stepping in to help her more and more on things. She's like super into fashion design. A lot of what she's doing is in the fashion and design space. She has a very good eye for design. Yes. At this point, she doesn't know a lot about it. So yeah. I'm like guiding her through all these things. And it got to a point where I was doing just as much for her as I was at my full-time job, yet I didn't have um, the vacation days at my full-time job to be able to right. like be at all these tournaments where I needed to be for these meetings with her. So Stu and I were like, we just, I gotta, yeah, I gotta leave that and come to her full-time. Yeah. So I think like May of 2018, I left and came on full-time as her creative director. And you immediately became her creative director, which is still one, one of your today. many titles yeah. today. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then three months later, she won US Open. So I was already like full-time working for her, no other distractions, which was Perfect. Yes. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it was like overnight she was catapulted not only into the spotlight, but alongside that also a lot of demand. It was like today she wanted her. We immediately flew from New York. She wasn't living. She lives in L.A. now. She was not living in L.A. at the time. We flew from New York out to L.A. the next day after that to do the Ellen DeGeneres show. Oh. And we did... I can't even remember. We had a couple other things lined up. And then I think like the next day after that, then she flew to Tokyo 
for I think a tournament that was happening there, but also because she plays for Japan, the, yeah. her, that's her home country, and that was like a big, a, an important place to be following the win as well. So it was like, wow, she hit the ground running the minute she won, and it. Now we're here. We are in twenty twenty four, and it like weirdly hasn't stopped. Mm-hmm. And she has said like that one match changed everything, mm-hmm. and then it was like there was no turning back after that. Yeah. So then, it's like the moment in the movie when like all of a sudden it just goes in fast motion. It's like she's on a plane. She's going everywhere. Yeah. Like her, all of a yeah. sudden her life is yeah. completely changed. And that I just can't yeah. stop thinking about how she's 18 years old when all this is yeah. happening. 18 and then 19. Like what were you yeah. and I doing? I'll tell you exactly oh. what we were doing. Making out in Pantana Bobs. Yep. <laughs> yep. With anybody who would make Not out Not even us. yet. Were we even there yet? I don't we even know. We've just gotten there. Yeah. 18. Freshman at college. <gasps> Whoa. I think now Very also that lives. we have kids, that puts it in so much more perspective. Totally. Like that's that's our kids in 14 years. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Which feels kind of soon. <laughs> feels incredibly soon. Yeah. Like four years slow. <gasps> yeah. Okay. Keep going. So um, she then went on to do like a most incredible feat where she won US Open and then she won Australian Open, which is the next slam after that. So she won back-to-back slams. So she won U.S. Open 2018. She won Australian Open 2019. Then the following year, she did it again and yeah. won U.S. Open 2020 and back-to-back again, Australian Open 2021. Wow. So for four years in a row, she won a slam every year, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. Oh, yeah. Okay. This brings us up to what? 20... 2021. So 2021. So she won a slam... 18, 19, 20, 21. And 2021 is when she That's took. What I was going to say. Yeah. 2021 French Open. She kind of made Open. this announcement at the French that she did She's not want to do press. She's, She's there. Yeah. She didn't want to do press because she just wasn't in the right mental state. Mm-hmm. She cited mental health as the reason for not wanting to do press. And it blew up like a bomb in sure all did. sports. Yep. Um, I feel like everyone remembers this. Yeah. I found it to be the most bizarrely controversial yes. thing that's ever happened in sports history. Yes. Where's the controversy? Yes. All the, like, the French Open did not receive it well. They, like, banded together with the other slams to fine her. They, like, really because went against it. You mean it. once she decided, I'm out? Because she... When she said she wasn't going to do press. Oh, this the whole is just press. Yeah. They're going to fine her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the way it was handled was very poor. I yeah. think now that several years have gone by and all these other athletes in tennis and in other sports have come out and said the same things, I think it is she paved the way. The tables are turning a yeah. little bit, and the um, organizations that head up all of these mm-hmm. sports tournaments or franchises or whatever are are starting to yeah. get it. Um, she tennis started is, a really important conversation and unfortunately, again, had to be the person getting all the backlash. Yeah. Yeah. I think tennis is a very interesting sport as well because in tennis, after every single match that you play, whether you win or lose, you're required directly following the match to go sit in a room of Hideous. journalists and do press. Hideous. Whether it was a first round match or a final in a Grand Slam, whether you won it or lost it, you have to go sit in that room and answer everybody's questions being like, so you you lost today. Tell us how you feel. Not good. In no other sport do you have that. Like if, you know, like if the 49ers lose the Super Bowl, you think every single player on that team is going and sitting through press? That's mental. And speaking, like, no, the coach takes the brunt of it. Yeah. And, like, maybe one or two players will give an interview. Yeah, I think that they, from all the sports romances I read, I'm now a bit of an expert. Um, yeah, I believe, you would know. <laughs> I believe that they, yeah, they, like, handpick yeah. two or three players. And I think. So I, guess what? If I'm having a bad mental health day, it's not me. I'm yeah. not the one they're picking. I was going to say, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure, like, in those cases, the, it's up to the player to just be like, sure, yeah. I'll do it or no, I won't. There's no, there's no fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, from my there's no deep understanding, I think you're right. That's fucked. Tennis, you are required to sit down and face those people and answer their questions. Mm. She's like, nope. And she said this before the tournament yeah. started, that she just wasn't in a place to do press. Yeah. She didn't want to, and she was going to sit it out. And that's what caused this uproar, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is bullshit. Really, truly It is insane. so antiquated. Yeah. It needs to change. Yeah. So hopefully we're making steps towards that. Can I actually back up and ask? She became this 
very much like face of like mental health um, advocacy in the sports world. Yeah. Whether she meant to do that or yes. not, was that a purposeful? I mean, I think at the time she was in a bad mental frame. Like she, yep. she genuinely just like didn't want to do the press. So like that's why yep. she said it. Was there intention as the person who is her like the person kind of crafting her brand? Yep. Was there also intention behind? Hey, okay, if you do that, let's also like make a stand and like, do you want mental health and like mental health awareness to yep. become a part of your brand? Are you okay with that? Are you comfortable with that? Was there a talk of that or was it like, I can't do the press? Tell this, them. it was all happening really fast, like really fast in real time. There was certainly no planning uh-huh. or like time to plan of okay. like, okay, if, if we do this, then let's start a partnership with yeah no certainly that was not the conversation but i think are you in france when all this is going down no actually because it was covid Uh Stu and i were both at home oh that must have been really hard and with the time difference she was calling us like middle of the night to tell us what was going on there and i mean we were like not sleeping that was i'll never forget i remember like exactly where we were standing the first time she called everything standing in our kitchen it was like 11 p.m um you have a one-year-old Yes. Yes. It's yes. A month old. yes. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, um, I think that what Stu and I have always said to her and said to like any brand that we work with, for example, is like, I think the beauty of Naomi is her genuine, raw mm-hmm. self. None of it, none of what she ever does has ever been manufactured or persuaded by us or by a brand yeah she always maybe not always nine times out of ten she will come to us and say this is how i'm feeling and this is what i want to do and unless you foresee the world ending with me doing it i'm gonna do it and Stu will kind of say like you should absolutely do it maybe if you're gonna say it like change your wording a little bit here so you don't get you know, uh, nailed another, for it, but yeah. like say, speak from the heart, say whatever you want to say, and like yeah. we'll we'll cover the yeah the we'll do the, the backlash if there is any yeah um and I think that's why a lot of brand not only brands but just like gen- fans or even non tennis fans but people who know she who she is like mm-hmm. I think that's why people love her because it is really real and from mm-hmm. the heart and none of it is ever in an effort to like be an activist mm-hmm. I think. Lots of times now that she has been so vocal about mental health and other things, um, she was she's been very vocal about like race relations. She wore the masks at U.S. Open twenty twenty one during right. the Trayvon Martin era that had yeah. the names of seven victims. Um, I think brands know that and they see that, and I think they um, kind of like they're interested in that, but there is no. They come to us and are like, she's such an activist. Like, we want to have her on our side. She's an activist. She's great. We love what she's doing. And Naomi has always said, I don't consider myself an activist Uh because I think that the word activist carries a certain weight of obligation to act. And I don't feel like I'm obligated to speak up about any of these things or I'm obligated to necessarily go do anything about it. It's just me professing what I feel about whatever the thing is. And like, if that makes wheels start turning Mm -hmm. in other places, that's Mm -hmm. great. And I love using my voice for that, but I don't like the word activist because it carries a certain weight that I, I'm just speaking freely. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that was a really interesting way to look at it. So a lot of times when we're doing very like, don't put me in this, don't lump me in this activist bubble. Like, let me just say the things that are important to me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't expect me to say it the next time that something in the same realm comes up just because you've lumped me in there. Like, I'm going to say it yeah. when and if it – my heart tells me Yeah. Really so I think for a while, like, if we were, you know, reviewing copy from a brand partner who was, like, you know, doing a blurb about her and it was like, Naomi Osaka, activist, activist. whatever, we would always strike that yeah. and change it to, like – champion for change or yeah. advocate for change yeah. or something like that. Like activist was just not not uh-huh. a term she wanted uh-huh. to. And is this you, getting back to you and what your role is with her, you have kind of helped her 
there was that great, uh, I think it was Wall Street Journal article. I'm sorry, I'm talking about Taylor Swift again, <laughs> but I am. Just let it go. I'm more talking about Travis. There was a great Wall Street Journal I have article to add on that. right that, before, you okay. know the one, I'm sure, because it's what you guys are doing with Naomi. But it was basically the brand, the team behind yes, creating it's Aaron the brand. And Andre. Yes. Okay. Do you know yes. them? Yes. We just met with them at Super Bowl. So it was like the team that's creating the Travis Kelsey brand. And yep. basically, professional athletes have a short compared to a normal career, they have a short shelf life, like yeah. a short career. Yep. Um, tennis players, especially so, right? Like, kind of, I, yeah, I would their agree career, their tennis career ends. It peaks, peaks earlier. Peaks earlier. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so, this article that I'm talking about was about how Travis Kelsey will have to retire soon and at some yes. point what's next yes they have to tv, create TV. Yes. yeah yes what's Maybe next for him yeah. all the things and that's you for naomi right yes exactly. you are her team who is making sure that this like wonderful woman who is now like a fashion icon and a champion for change of so many things yep. she's now a mom yep. and so she's done some really cool work on like what the fuck that means and all yep. the things that we talked about at the yep. top of this episode um you're the person creating a brand behind a tennis yes. player. Yes. What is like, what does your day to day look like in terms of like, are you in the nitty gritty, like, like making sure that she's like on the ground happy in Australia at a tennis tournament? Or are you like talking to Nike about her next design collab? Uh, all of that. So All I think that. from several years ago, we knew like, okay, she has so many things she's interested in that mm -hmm. she's good at that are outside of tennis. Yeah. How do we, I think the issue with lots of athletes these days is that they wait until their career's over, their career's done, and then they're like, now what? And yes. at that point, it's a little too late. Yeah. Got to plant those seeds, baby. You have to have yeah. irons in the fire ahead of time so that they are warm and ready to go by yeah. the time and so they need to be. And so you are a person and you're like carrying out that brand on the court where you're getting all the eyes before there's no more eyes. Yes. Yeah. And so I think like we started thinking about that with Naomi a long time ago yeah. and how do we build this brand and these opportunities for her so that when tennis is over, for example, like she's always said she wants her own fashion brand. Yeah. So like that, I feel like we are getting to a good place where if and when that day comes, she retires from tennis and she wants to do that, we are well set up mm -hmm. to do that. And people know her as a fashion, fashion. darling yes. and a great designer and all of these things. Yeah. So like we have intentionally, I think, structured her partnerships, partic particularly in the fashion space, yeah. as such that they are design collaborations mm -hmm. and not just athlete endorsements. Yeah. So every deal we've done in the fashion space has included – a design element where Naomi will design a ca capsule collection for them or she'll design so cool. some portion of some other product that they have. So like we started looking at it as, okay, let's do a design collaboration in every category mm -hmm. so that if and when one day you do want to start your own brand, you have this full circle knowledge of how everything works in every single category of fashion. So like we've done a handbag collaboration. We've done a footwear collaboration. We've done that is swimwear so smart. Your, collaboration. You're sending her to fashion school, school. help me, design school yeah. on the brand's budget. Like totally. you're, yeah. That is yeah. so brilliant. We've done swimwear. We've done denim. We've done... Wow. What was your favorite collaboration? I mean, we don't have to pick a favorite, but what was your favorite? Um, <laughs> you guys worked on... There's two. Or, and so it doesn't have to be like, you know, the style itself, but just like what was really fun to work on. I would say two things. One is, so she has a Nike have, mm -hmm. she has a Naomi Osaka Nike collection uh -huh. that drops twice a year, a spring, summer, and a holiday collection. Um, that is so much fun to work on. Awesome. The Nike team are elite. Uh, we meet with them multiple God, times a year. that feels so year. good to hear. They really are. I don't know, because Nike's so like, it's everywhere. We all wear it all the time. It's so good to hear that there's just a good team behind it. It is. I've never seen anything like the Nike oh. headquarters in Portland. Yeah. I want to go. It is That's mind sick. blowing. Yeah. The capabilities that they have for an athlete there. Uh, um, but also from a de design perspective, uh -huh. like their creative teams are uh -huh. just like tip top. And so you and Naomi are working in tandem with these brands, with Nike's creative team. Yep. And is she saying like, I want a, 
pink shoe and I want it to have a huge sole and then, and then they come back with prototypes or is she like sketching? She's sketching. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Are you sketching? No. <laughs> Naomi's sketching. Yeah. How can you be good at so many things? I, I might be sketching if she wasn't good at it. Yeah. I might be doing the sketching for her so we could pass something along to them, but she's great at it. What? She's always said that like she and her wow. sister are super into fashion and design. And when they were little and they were traveling to all these tournaments and they were in the car for long periods of time, they would sit in the back and look at magazines oh. and sketch and like come up with their own design. So that has, that's something she's been doing for a long time. Cool. So there's a natural like opportunity here, I think. Yes. This isn't, we're not like... Yeah, we're trying not, to build her brand on something that doesn't. We're not square peg that's, round that's, again, manufactured. Like yeah. this is very something yeah. that she's super into, and she'll tell you is her passion. Off she the court. every event that she's ever photographed in, she not only looks like so chic, but it's a look. Like she yeah. is a aesthetic girl. Like there's a whole yeah. you see you look at her and you're like, what are you wearing? Like how'd you come up with that yeah. whole thing? Yeah. Do you help? Does she have a stylist? She does not have a stylist. Okay. We have used stylists yeah. before for like photo shoots and, or magazine yeah. covers or whatever mm-hmm. it may be, but on a daily basis, she does not have a stylist. Wow. Are um, you her stylist? I would not. I cannot take credit for that. She it's is, all her. It's all her. She will like, if we're How, going somewhere together. Where does she find the time? <laughs> She's on the road 49. Because she just has a natural like yeah, sense it's her passion. for it. It's, her, it's not it's her a hobby. time consumption. It's her she hobby. Just, yeah. It's just like in yeah. innately like in her character to like put something together and she looked awesome. Awesome. If we're going she together somewhere to like so cool. an event or an appearance uh-huh. or a meeting or something, she'll sometimes text me or call me on FaceTime and be like, what do you think about this? Should yeah. I change this? Should I wear these shoes instead? Whatever. That's about as much like stylist input as I have. I cannot uh-huh. take credit for it. Does she help style you? She and I together help style Stu. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Like we have like a group chat, me, her, and Stu, where like she and I will just send <laughs> pictures of like the unacceptable stuff yep. that Stu's wearing. I wouldn't say Scottish so men are no- <laughs> Scottish men who then are become lawyers are like notoriously okay. stylish. In Stu's credit, he actually has great style. I will give him that. Yeah. But like there's just little things mm-hmm. that Naomi and I will joke about, like, mm, did you see he's wearing like those you know, shoes whatever. With that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're always yeah. just kind of joking about it. Wow, Stu has great style. Must be he nice. does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think uh, I really love my husband's style. Isn't one of his things? And okay. he, in, in fact, like so much so that he'll be like, "I do not care. Stop buying me new things. <laughs> like that's not where I want to spend my money, all my he time, wants are Tommy my John. energy. All he wants are <laughs> his Tommy Johns, his like short shorts, and he's like, I'm good. I like that though. <sighs> that's him. Yeah. I'm like his friends make so much fun of him. Like his friends, I feel like. 30 you know late 30s men like at least in san francisco like kind of come into like a fashion like they they his friends are like discovering fashion and like yeah, what it I, means you're not, to yeah, like I have style disagree. and like george shows up in like i don't know vans his, and like, shorts short and a hoodie shorts, yeah. and they're like why <laughs> <laughs> i love it it's who he is. i know you're right we love it we <laughs> love it for him um okay so that brings us up in, up to now yeah yeah well, I, I started by saying, like, you. explaining a little bit about her brand, but I didn't answer your question about the day to day. Yes, thank you. If you still want to go there, please. Um, yeah, I think we. So Stu and I worked together. Myself, Stuart, and Naomi started our agency, Evolved Together. So yes. Naomi is a partner yes, in the yes, agency. Yes, she is our client, but she is also a partner. Oh, she's a partner yes. in the agency. Yes. Gosh, that's just so she's very involved. Trust, yeah. like. If she were to ever leave you guys, like she is a partner in mm-hmm. that agency. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. That's really cool. It and feels impressive. like a family. Yeah. yeah, that's a family. Stu is her agent. I'd yes. say I would kind of think of it as like he handles all things business. Mm-hmm. So he is negotiating all of her deals. Mm-hmm. He is um, thinking. Including of- with Nike. He's yeah. the, yeah, yep. he's the one like managing every aspect of her business. And yes. then, yeah. And then I am handling all things creative. So once it gets past the negotiations, contracts are signed, Carly steps in. Exactly. Uh-huh. So we work together. Yeah. We do very different things. Yeah. It does not feel like we are like stepping on each other's toes or like. Great. So when we, when I think about us like both working from home and both yeah. being in the house and like both working together, both like everybody's from like, how do you all work on together? the same team? We work for the same people, mm-hmm. but we do such different things that it just doesn't feel like we're, mm-hmm. you know, 
like doing the same thing. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but it works. Does it ever feel like he's your boss or is he simply not? Um, no. Yeah. No. Great. No. I, that would cr- kill me. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, no. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> You're his we boss. Are, we are very much partners uh-huh. and he does a great job of making me mm-hmm. feel like that and never feel like we're – Yeah one of us is above or below the other. Now that you're a partner of the agency, do you you don't consider yourself an agent? So funny you <laughs> or do that. you? So yeah. Shouldn't have worded it that way. I think Stu and Naomi and I together in like re- I don't know, in the past year or so have kind of joked to the like now I'm Naomi's agent. Mm-hmm. Because Stu is just, so I mentioned to you earlier, like we also, we can get into this too. We also have a production company that we started with LeBron and his partner. Yes. That Stu's super involved in. Stu is kind of like. That's chill with when you're on first name with LeBron. Yeah. That was, that was a cool <laughs> drop. Yeah, thanks. Um, I yeah, mean, he, he needs started a lesson. production company that's doing. It's doing, it is a story-driven media company. Story-driven media um, company. Can our, you tell us what you're working on now that you told me downstairs? Our sort of, maybe a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Our, our slogan is to disrupt the default with joyful craftsmanship. Wow. And we want to tell stories about... Joyful. I like that word. People mm-hmm. and cultures and things that are not often talked about but are very important and kind of shed light on issues or ways of life or talents of individuals yeah. or otherwise that that deserve the attention that they're not getting. Yeah. Um, Can you tell us about some projects that you guys are working on? So we, last year we released our first short documentary called Mink. Um, it was a short doc about Patsy Mink, who was the first congresswoman of color. Whoa. And she championed Title IX. Okay. Which yeah. is the yeah. like title through the government that basically allowed women to play sports yep. in high school. And, and still remains controversial for m- many reasons ridiculous. in the yes. women's sports world. Yes. So Naomi has said, like, without Patsy Mink and Title IX, Naomi wouldn't be wow. who why is she that? is today. Tell me why that is. Because she didn't play in college, right? So why is that? Just women weren't allowed to play okay, sports. Because women weren't so allowed like, to fucking play sports. And no, she didn't play in college because she never went to college. Because yeah. she's been on the tennis tour. Because she's been winning she was grand like thirteen slams years old since she was a child. Um, yeah. So Patsy Klein, Patsy Mink, Patsy Klein, Patsy Mink just very much revolutionized women's sports. <laughs> totally. Yes. Um, so we put out a short documentary on that. It was nominated for an Emmy. Okay. Um, really exciting. It did who, not win, but the nomination who was cares? Like, very flattering for that. Congratulations. To have been Hanakuma, our production company's yes. first documentary that we released, Emmy nomination. Congratulations. Incredible. Um, so yeah, I think like Hanakuma in general is doing a lot of various things. You'll see like some scripted, some non-scripted. Uh-huh. We've got a great, um, like audio visual podcast with our other client tennis player nick kyrgios Uh so evolve now has two clients naomi and nick correct Mm -hmm. yes so nick's australian Uh also grand slam finalist Uh has never won one but has been in the final um he is very charismatic he's electric like anybody who i feel like people who don't even know tennis know nick because he's just such a thrill to watch okay so your day-to-day day-to-day yeah um you and Stu. In the house, you wake up with the kids. There's two of them. Four, four months. You guys are in over by the water. Yep. Marina Del Rey. Yep. Um, Talk to us about it. We. How do you get it done? We. What's the day? Yeah, great question. We have, (laughs) I, we have fantastic childcare. I will say that first and foremost. So we wake up in the morning. We have both of them. Our oldest Finn goes to school. At, a, at like the cutest preschool that's at the end of our street. Oh, so, the dream. Fantastic. Um, you can drop them off anytime between 8 and 9 a.m. And we have him there at 8.01. 8 a.m. Uh-huh. Um, so we drop him off. We're in the same, uh, um, same camp. Yep. We go back home and then uh, our nanny comes. Uh-huh. I've got the baby for a little bit. Then the nanny comes, takes the baby, and then I get on with my day. So we have mm-hmm. a little bit of like a um, – non-alignment in the morning we basically come back from 
from dropping Finn mm-hmm. and then Stu can kind of get straight to work. I, t- I mm-hmm. have the baby until the nanny comes, usually mm-hmm. for like an hour or so. Do you like that time? Yes and no. Yeah. I do because if I don't have that time, then our nanny has him until six o'clock, mm-hmm. which is also the same time that like Finn usually gets back from whatever he's doing. Mm-hmm. And then I don't get time yep. if I don't get that morning time. So I yeah. like it, but it's also like going back to welcoming the interruptions. Mm-hmm. So many mornings I'm like, oh, if I just didn't have him right now, I could be getting all this other stuff done. Yep. But I have to tell myself, like, we're – I'm done having kids. We're stopping yeah. it too. I'm never going to have this little baby again. Yes. Like, if I don't do this now, I don't get it back. And they literally change every single yeah. day at that age. So it's both. Some days I'm like – Yeah. It's in, inconvenient for la- – that's a horrible term to no. say about your baby. But, like, it's inconvenient. Yeah, and other days I'm like – it's an hour of my time. Yes. There's nothing I'd rather be doing than yes. like spending it with my child, yes. my baby, and whatever. I um I also think that in California we wake up behind. Yes. The East Coast has been cranking for three hours yep. by the time we wake up. So our inboxes, inboxes full. are yep. full. Yep. You've got like you've missed text messages or not missed, but like there oh. are text messages waiting for you. There's missed calls already. There's, my mom yep. has called me three times because despite having lived here for 10 years, she cannot remember yep. that <laughs> three hours behind. Like I wake up to a full um, – something I've been doing is keeping my phone off my bedside table. I don't know if you listened to the episode with Dr. Aditi Narukar, but she's like this yes. amazing stress – doctor yep. and keeping my phone off my bedside table. I don't even look at it until the nanny comes now and it's changed yeah, my nice. life. That's nice. It's like changed my life. I mean, I, it's I should also consider that. very difficult because you have people much more demanding of your time, whereas I don't. Like nobody's looking to me to like get them answers immediately. Yeah. So it's a different... It's... Yeah. But... Yeah. I think that's also like a little bit of the beauty of us working together is yeah, that like if someone's right. asking us something... I'm okay to have the baby because I know that Stu can get back to them yes. or vice versa. Gosh, that's so great. Whereas I think if I was like doing this alone, needing to get back to people yep. immediately, it would be a little bit different. Like we can yep. really like push – there's a big push and pull yep. on each other of like, okay, I've got yeah. the kids, so you do this. Or like you take them and I'll go do it. And we're working towards the same goal. Yes. But it's not. How like, did you guys decide – was it a decision decision at all or was it just – the female is always the default, that you would be the one who hangs with. Oh, female's the default. That's yep. all it was to for us. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Isn't it interesting? Mm-hmm. And it's just... And I was thinking about this the other day and also talking with a friend about it. I think that was also something that for a long time really frustrated me. Mm-hmm. Like, it would just make me mad mm-hmm. and put me in a bad mood and I would let it, like, spiral my whole day because I was okay. so annoyed that, like... He gets to get to work an hour earlier and all of a sudden. Yeah. All so many thing, things, yes. Yep. And then I'm kind of trying to also like shift that mindset into when it, we were talking about uh, fair play. Uh-huh. When it comes to like the mental load. Yes. He is incre- – Stu is inv- incredibly helpful physically and in person. Like he will take Finn. He will go do things with yep. him. He will entertain him. Yep. He will never carry the mental load of what time they get their medicine, how much medicine do they get, when is their next appointment for something, what do they need to bring to school this day, Mm -hmm. what goes in their lunchbox. Like Mm -hmm. that it will never be in here for him. And that like was some of the stuff that started to build up for me as a frustration of like, why am I the only one that has to think about this? But I'm trying to shift it as like, I'm actually so glad that it's me that gets to think about that because I want to know all of those things. Yeah. And it would give me more anxiety if I thought that there were things that were going on for my children that I didn't know. Even if someone else that I fully trusted was mm-hmm. handling them, mm-hmm. I want to I want to know all those things yeah. and like have a grasp on it. And so again, it's kind of thinking about it as like it's actually a privilege to be the one to get to do all of those because then I'm not ever looking at him or someone else being like, what do I do now? Or like, what, 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 what happens? Like, I just know all of that. And that gives me peace. Yes. Then relying on someone else to do it. That's such a, um, I feel like I, at about the time that Mattis was four, also had that mindset shift. I used to get so frustrated by being the default parent. Like when they're homesick from school, I also have a full-time job and yet it's me. It sounds like same thing in your house. 
you know, this huge laundry list of items that just like kind of fall on the wife in most marriages. But I had the same exact shift as you as like, actually like what a freaking joy that like Mm -hmm. my kids go to school every day, all day. Mm -hmm. Like how about like my job is not so important that I can't take off two days and hang out with them and like take them to the, on a hike when they're homesick, I'm doing air quotes, from school. Like what yeah. a freaking joy. Yeah. What a welcome interruption to yeah. your, and to I your think point. I've thought about this so many times and you, I think, will feel the same way. Like working for yourself, I think, is actually also what makes that okay. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sure there would be instances where you're working for another company that, yeah. that you could also make that work. But like for me, the trade-off is, okay, if I'm going to go pick Finn up from school at three and I'm going to have him until six mm-hmm. – then I'm going to do dinner. We're all going to do dinner and I'm going to get them both to, both to sleep. And then I go back to my computer yes. from 7.30 to yes. 10.30 yes. almost every night almost because I have night. to make up that time. And yes. I'm okay with doing that because I know yes. that that's the trade-off. That's like the trade-off. either go hang out with them yep. or don't and then like finish my work day sooner, but then mm-hmm. I haven't gotten the time with him. And like mm-hmm. I, I am able gosh, to have that flexibility have same work day. because I work for myself. Yep. And I love it like that. Yes. Like I actually get some of my best work done yes. after 7.30 because the house is quiet. quiet. We're back in our study carols. Stu's quiet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's like at, at home, like I can hear him on his calls. I can yeah. hear, like I just, there's yeah. just stuff in my uh-huh. in my background, in my periphery that's uh-huh. like distracting. Uh-huh. 7.30 onward, I'm like, let's bang it but out. R- completely, yes. we have the exact same yep. work day. And I similarly used to see that as, what the fuck is my life? All You're I do is- staying up till is, 11 o'clock. I'm yep. staying up till mm-hmm. 11 yep. o'clock. My kids go to bed and I work. Like, this is depressing. What is this life? And now I'm like, what a- what I actually an love absolute it. joy <laughs> yep. that I get to hang out with my kid for four hours in the middle of the day. Like, mm-hmm. I am privileged beyond privilege that I would a thousand that this percent is an option. not be doing yeah. if I was working in an office uh-huh. in person for uh-huh. a company that wasn't my own. Uh-huh. No chance. Yeah, it's. I feel people's work days have gotten so much more flexible after COVID with working from home. Yeah, um, and I'm. I am seeing friends who have more traditional jobs, like, and want to spend more time with their kids. Yeah, start to talk to their companies about like, mm-hmm. let me restructure these my days a little bit. Like, yep. let me work in the work in the off hours and then like be able to spend this time with my yep. kids when I have to. When I get to. Yeah, I think, of course, there are certain things that do require, like, immediate attention or immediate response or whatever. For the most part, like, as long as the work is Mm -hmm. getting done, Mm -hmm. who cares if it's happening at 2 p.m. or if it's happening at 7 Mm -hmm. p.m.? Like, Mm -hmm. I think when I was, like, building this business, I used to think, like, I have to respond to this email immediately. Like, oh, I get a a brand emails me. Like, I have to respond right away and say say, say yes or, like, go give it to someone else. Like, that's not how the world works. Nobody is sitting there waiting on your email response put your phone down and play with your kids like it's fine Mm -hmm. it's fine i actually feel the i almost feel that pressure more now like now that i'm a veteran yeah i feel that pressure more from friends than i do from business stuff Ooh, tell me like i will get text messages throughout the day from friends that i see yeah and i want to respond to yep i'm not going to respond right then Mm mm-hmm I might respond later that day or I might not respond for several days. It doesn't mean that I didn't think about the text. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about what I wanted Mm -hmm. to say back. I didn't think about that person. Like I thought of all those things. Yes. I just didn't have the capacity in the minute to respond. And for me, I would rather wait and respond when I actually have like the full mental awareness, like really put some thought Uh into the response. Totally. Then to text back immediately and be like, cool. Yes. So I end up waiting. Yes. And then I always feel, not always, but like in some cases more recently, I just feel, and maybe I'm imagining this, but I feel like friends are like, oh, she's like too busy for me. Not or available. Whatever. I know exactly. It's not yes. that. It's just in that moment, uh-huh. I wasn't able to get right back to you. And then like, I because I do care, I want to wait until a time that I can actually like put some thought into yeah. my response back to you. I think we're uh, like with doing this sort of stay at home, work from home mom thing that you and I both do. We are so overloaded at all times. And so I have started doing that too with texts. Like I treat them more like emails. Yeah. A text. Totally. In in 
uh, its nature is to demand an immediate response. Yep. Like you email when it's allowed to sit there. And yep. I've started to treat texts more like emails. Like I'll go through at the end of the day and be like, whoops, Carly texted me two days ago. Whoops. And get back. Yep. And that's just, again, phase of life. I do the exact same thing. So this goes against you saying you're leaving your phone not on the nightstand. But I will yeah. get in bed after I've gone back to my computer yep. from 7 to 1030 or whatever, gotten through all that. Excuse me. Then I get to my bed to go to sleep, and it's one, right when I get in my bed before I watch a show, before I do anything else. I get in my bed and I scroll through all of my text messages mm-hmm. to see who I haven't responded to, mm-hmm. respond to them. Then I put my phone on Do Not Disturb and I go to sleep. Oh, I like that. And then the same thing happens the next day. Like um, I wake up, I have texts that I see that I don't respond to all day long, yep. and then I get back to them that night. It's yep. just it, that's it's, the best I can do right now. It's another thing with <laughs> California. Our old friends and all of our family are in North Carolina, yes. Yes. and so we wake up. To a slurry of texts every single morning. Yep. If, a, if a friend, one of my like UNC friend chains, one of my boarding school friend chains gets going in the morning before I wake up, I start the day with like a panic attack. Yep. I'm like, how will I ever catch up? Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, we Same. never went through your daily of Evolve, yeah. but give us just kind of like the touch points. Like what are the different pieces of Naomi's business that you're working on? Are you also working on Nick's business at all? Like what are you doing? Yeah. What's your day? I think so... There are a lot of intricacies throughout the day Mm -hmm. that range from like tiny in the weeds to very big picture. Mm -hmm. So in any given day, I think there's like several different things that I'm working on. One is like kind of just generally having a pulse on her. Mm -hmm. How's she feeling? Yeah. How's she doing? How's her training going? How's her baby? Like just... Just, on a on a very personal level, just yeah. kind of like, and that comes from either like speaking to her or speaking to Stu who spoke to her or someone else on the team who spoke to her. Like I just, we all like our team is very close. And by mm-hmm. team, I mean, not only myself and Stu and Naomi, but also like her coach, her trainer, her yeah. whatever, like we're all, it all feels like a family and yeah. we're all very in, in touch on like, how do we help her feel her best? Yeah. And so even if I haven't spoken to her, chances are I know was it? how she's feeling yeah so i think always kind of just like being in tune to mm-hmm. what she might be feeling what what she might be wanting what she might not be wanting like mm-hmm. if i have someone coming to me saying like hey we need naomi to post this on instagram today and i know she's having a bad day like i'm not i'm not even gonna go ask her to uh-huh. post it Ugh. like just well, kind then, of having a yeah. constant like awareness i think of of her on a personal level then i think from a tennis perspective um there's on my side it's a lot of just thinking about like the tennis schedule Mm -hmm. how it fits into other deliverables that we have for like photo shoots and things that she needs to do knowing that she's on the road that many weeks of the year i mean she must be going straight from tournament to brand shoot does she ever go home like it's a wild life she does but it's very unpredictable because it all depends on how far you how deep you make it in a tournament yes if you make it all the way to a final, then the next tournament starts the next day. Holy if you fuck. lose early, you've suddenly got a week off that you didn't know you had. So it's impossible to plan. It's impossible. <laughs> oh, my God. I never thought about that. Of yeah. course. But there are – you have to think about that, too. Like, we would never p- ask her to post anything on Instagram on a match day. Uh-huh. We're not going to ask anything of her on a match day. So what, once we know the schedule for, like, that tournament, then all those days are basically out for any asks of any kind. Um, I just know on such a smaller scale, like how brands like to plan in advance and get on your calendar and be able to activate difficult. around knowing. I that's mm-hmm. that, that's a full time job. We have been very schedule it management. Is, it is. It's crazy. We've been very lucky with brands being very understanding. They have and to. Completely Otherwise, flexible. they have no choice. Yeah, but still, can't like, play. Still, yeah. Um. So there's that. Then. The bulk of my job from a creative perspective is like um, most of it is like larger project based. So like Mm -hmm. designing her twice year Mm -hmm. Nike collection with her or um, I'm sure you saw we did. We signed a partnership with Bobby Formula. Yes. um, When she had her baby shy. And she was kind of a great campaign with them that they actually aired on ESPN yes. during the Australian that Open. Was it was the so first time cool. in history that a formula company has put an ad on ESPN. Huge. Huge. Um, so when we were like planning out that campaign and all of that, it was like constant daily contact with the Bobby yeah. team and what's this going to look like and how do we want to 
shoot her or not shoot her. I'm sort of feeding information back and forth between the brands of like, she likes to be shot like this. She doesn't like Mm -hmm. to be shot like this. We don't, you know, we don't want to see close ups of here, here, and here. We want to, you know, show, she's fine to show her baby's hand in the shot, but we don't want to show any face, Uh you know, whatever all the like parameters are. And like using the Bobby example, figuring out like what's she going to wear for that shoot. I'm kind of help. So I am stylist. Like I'm for brandy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think on a, on a like creative basis, a lot of the projects in the day to day are like with brands mm-hmm. facilitating whatever it is, whether it's a campaign or a collection mm-hmm. design or whatever those things mm-hmm. are. Then I think like smaller scale, um, it's like keeping into, we actually just, she, she just hired a social team to manage her social. But before that it was like, Stu and I and our other Alex, oh. Alex, who's on our team, figuring out like, which is its own. What are her obligations for partners when they need uh. to get posted? What she needs to say when it's going live? What does she need to reshare it or does she need to collab on it? Like all that stuff. So yeah. that was like a an intricate. Does part she of enjoy? Me. Is she active on social media? Like, yeah, she has always felt like. In, I think she's getting a little more active on TikTok now. Before oh. that, she was kind of like watching but not doing yeah um i think she's always said that instagram is like hers like she wants it to be very personal and very real and she doesn't want it to be a bunch of like branded content yeah. granted there we have contractual obligations that we have to fulfill and there will always be like some yeah some pop of it that up. in there mm-hmm. um but no i think more recently like even since having shy she kind of was like oh i really want to like actually be more active on social media and like really give people perspective into my life and like what I like and what I'm doing. I think she, after perhaps maybe the like French open 2021 drama, I think she just like retracted a little bit into Uh her shell and didn't want to share as much because everybody had an opinion and she just (sighs) didn't want to put very much out there and now I mean yeah she keeps saying that having had a baby has made her realize that she doesn't have time for the bullshit and she doesn't care what anybody thinks now like the only thing that matters is her and her baby and her own family and she just doesn't care and I think that what a beautiful release perspective has changed everything for her do you see that in her a thousand percent she is a different person it's so cool it is the most fascinating thing to see. Yeah. She is so much clearer in her communication. She knows she she's so decisive. She knows what she wants. She definitely knows what she doesn't want. Back to how moms become yes. just efficient. Yes. Efficiency like machines. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. don't have time to fuck around. Nope. Tell you exactly what I want. Yep. Yeah. I feel like we could talk all day long and we I barely even can. we've barely even scratched the surface. Yeah. But alas, you have to get back to your children and your job and as do you as do i what is something that you are out on right now i loved your answer for what you were into oh what's something that you're just like give me a break i'm done with that don't worry i had forgotten you had like teased me with with this (laughs) one and i didn't have an answer can i flip it on you and ask you oh yeah oh i have something i'm out on you know what I'm out on? I feel like I fly and I travel all the time. I bet you have status up the wazoo because you travel so much. Because I travel from a small airport, we have three airlines and I'm always just having to pick a different one to like get me out of there. Like Monterey only has like 10 flights a day. So yeah. I'm like United one day, American the next day, Alaska the next yeah. day. I cannot accrue flight status. Oh, and I annoying. like... I have no perks. I have no benefits. That's I feel really like annoying. I'm on an airplane every other week and I have no perks and benefits. You're probably like, they probably drive you to the fucking airplane. Oh my God. I wish they did. <laughs> no. We are loyal, united yeah. customers. Yeah. Always have been kind of by default. Like we mm-hmm. just kind of like started using them mm-hmm. and then Had again, got like the got status. enough status that it was like, okay, well now and we're not turning back. And then once you get it, you can't yeah. let it go. Um, I assume I wouldn't know yeah, I don't know what to tell. And I actually, I get that question a lot. Not exactly the same question that you're saying, but like people will say, oh, you travel so much. Like what airline do you think is the best to go with? I actually have no idea because they're I'm all horrible with United yeah, and none just... of them are good. 
but like I couldn't tell you're you the deep first in thing, United. Like, what the perks are. So yes. deep in United. <laughs> so deep in United. Um, but yeah, that's shitty. Yeah, it's shitty. Oh, got one. Kind of, kind of. I don't want to like make Stu look bad though. <laughs> <laughs> so out on my husband. <laughs> no, no, I'm out on. So he and I have been having this conversation recently. He is going to hate me for blasting his age, but he is in his 40s now. Go still. He just turned 41, mm-hmm. and his 40s makes it sound like he's even deeper in his Deep. 40s than he is. Um, he just turned 41. He, When you turn 40, I think you're like encouraged to get like a full-body physical, have your prostate checked. I think that's sure. when you start doing that now. Um, so he went to a doctor recently. He got – she gave him like all – the. let me – rephrase he went to an la doctor recently and was given Concierge. tons of yeah yes. was given tons of like supplements and sure. you know um non-medical forms of mushroom based tonics <laughs> not quite but yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes um and he has like gotten on this kick which i actually think is really sweet about like not wanting to be an old dad and wanting to be like in the best possible health for his kids so that when he's it's a fabulous kick to get on old and they're in college old and they're in college he's not like the old dad he's like still yeah. in good health and he's whatever love that um and so as such he has not only been taking all these vitamins but he's also gotten on this kick of like he bought an ice bath for our house oh jesus he gets up at 5 30 in the morning yep he does the ice bath yep um we Naomi is a partner of Hyper Ice. I don't know if you know that device. It's like a muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, a yeah, Hyper Ice. Totally. Know. Um, and they have these like, they're called the Norma Tech that are like these leg. Yes, I know what that is. Like too. these giant leg like, bags. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> make your legs real cold. Yes, yes, yes. and like circulate yep. help with like blood circulation and all those things. So he's like soup. He'll get up at five 30. He'll do the ice bath and he'll like put on the Norma tech boots and he'll like, then I'll go to the gym and do the sauna and then I'll take all of his supplements. And he's like, <sighs> drinks his AG one religiously. Uh-huh. And he's like on all of these things, mm-hmm. which is great. I'm in full support of that. What I'm not, what I'm out on. Yep. Is that there's this like ongoing chatter amongst Naomi's team of like, Oh, Carly used to be like the really fit, healthy one. Shut up. And now she's not. And Stu is. Nope. Yes. Delete. And it's like, Retract. it's like a joke, but it's serious. And I'm like, do I need to remind you that I just, just had a baby? Like, can you give me a fucking break? These idiots. But like, I'm still in on it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I want to be healthy. Yeah. I am like in favor of my health. I will do things. I am not, For I'm not getting in a nice bath. I'm just not. I'm cold me. all the time anyway. So in my eyes, like that is serving Actual the same torture. purpose. Yep. I don't need to be yeah, cold yeah, yeah, for 30 body's... minutes. I'm cold all day long. That's enough. <laughs> um, but like, I'm out on that for you. The Stu the other night was like, why don't I, we basically got to the end of the day and I was like, there is not, this goes back to trying to welcome the interruptions. I was like, there mm-hmm. is not enough time in the day. I get to the end of every yes. day and I still have five to 10 things on my list that I didn't get to. And I just <sighs> five hours of work left to get do. to them. Yes. Mm-hmm. He was like, well, did you, I was, Great oh God, example. I was talking about how cold I was in our house. Yeah. Again, always cold. And he was like, well, did you exercise today? And I was like, I, I didn't get to that. Like, I can't, mm-hmm. I didn't, I can't do everything in a day. Yeah. And that is one of the things that yeah. I didn't get to. And he was like, well, why don't you just wake up at 530 and Oh do my it? God. This is George's line too. <laughs> George will say, Annie Sellers actually quotes this. Annie is one of our mutual friends. Annie will quote this. George will say, if, if you say I didn't have time to work out today, he, sa- he will say, well, did you sleep today? Okay. He's like, if you slept, you had enough time to work out. Well, no, because my exact argument to Stu was sleep is one of the things on my list yes. that I need. So by waking up to go work out, I am actually Cannibal- taking you're away. cannibalizing yourself. Yes. 100%. So that's not actually, I'm not squeezing yep. in. Yep. I'm yep. not adding the workout yep. and t- taking off by doing that. I'm actually crossing off the mm-hmm. sleep in order to mm-hmm. accommodate that which like, i'm not okay they're, with because they're I just, equal on the list sleep and working out i need my sleep 100 percent same i get kooky kooky bananas if i don't get enough sleep yeah no crazy uh, the other like trick to that is in the night if there's ever a sound from a child mm-hmm. we are programmed mm-hmm. to wake up and stay awake yep. and like be aware of it 
not only awake. He sleeps with earplugs in and has oh. no awareness nor obligation yes. to inquire about what the sound might be. Yes. So his sleep is quality sleep every night. Mine is never quality never. sleep. And therefore... Like if I wore one of those sleepy ring thi- aura rings, yeah, That's would why be like, I don't wear them. Exactly. I already know I didn't get depressing. good sleep. I don't need a ring to tell me that. No. I don't so need like another app to tell no. me something that is wrong with me right now. So the extra sleep in the morning by not waking up at 5:30 yep. I is more valuable to me than it is to him because I've already 100%. not. So yeah. they're both about mental health. Working out and sleep are both about mental health for me and sleep gives me more quickly the benefits than exercise does. Like if I yeah. get 8 hours of sleep that is a better benefit to me than six hours of sleep plus a workout. Okay, you mentioned earlier that you are you're the cook of the family. Yep. I want to remind you that after I wrote Just Married. Oh, you don't I know what you're gonna say. You don't even need to remind me. I think these I know what you're are this is before the days of like I didn't have an Instagram following at this time. I didn't have like a blog. I just kind of got this cookbook deal kind of randomly looking back because you really have to have like an Instagram following to have a cookbook deal, but I did not. I just wrote this cookbook. So I my point in saying that is that now I have what to cook. So like every week I get 500 messages that are like, love this recipe, great job, good recipe. I get a lot of positive feedback in my life right now to like to put it bluntly. Like I get a lot yep. of positive feedback. And when I wrote Just Married, I didn't. It was very analog. Like I put this cookbook out in the world and then like I didn't know if anybody liked it. And in the mail from a young, <laughs> newly married Carly, and we like had barely chatted since we graduated. Yeah. You know, like we'd Even both still I moved feel like on. we were like like we knew who each other were in college. I wouldn't say we were Yeah, we were friends. We were like, different I grades. Really spending time yeah. with you. Hundred percent. We were totally different grades, totally different friend groups. I get this like it, I mean for it was a thank you note basically for writing this book. And you were like, my husband and I like never really connected on, around food and like we were never cooked together. And now we're like cooking your meals and we're like sitting down for dinner and I just need to thank you for this cookbook that you wrote. Like it's made a difference in my life. I, I have it taped in the back of my first you copy. That you taped just it. Made. It's still there. <laughs> I saw it the other day because I was holding this period it. and it's like my copy's like falling apart and it's in there. So. I love that. Carly. You've been cooking for your family for a long time. Now there's also two children around. What do you cook when you don't feel like cooking? I mean, obviously, I just pull up the most recent email from you and see what I have. Great in the answer. Fridge. Like, I Great literally answer. go into my Gmail, oh. type in Caro, and then I just look through the subject lines <gasps> to jog my memory. Like, if there's something I've made before yeah. that I know is super easy because I already uh-huh. have, like, muscle memory mm-hmm. of how I made it, or is there just something that sounds good? Mm-hmm. That's number one. Wow. Great plug. Thank you. Number – dead serious. Number two is – if I don't even feel like Googling yes. my, or searching my yes. inbox, I always go back to the 30-minute shawarma lettuce wraps. Yes. I make those like once a week. That's a cult fave. They like are the, the so girl, good. The girls who know, know. They're so good. Ground meat, spices. Yes. <laughs> avocado cucumber. Oh, that avocado cucumber salad uh-huh. is. Uh-huh. So Great I will one. do that very This often. is a recipe from the newsletter, if anyone's not familiar. Which I feel like was actually a while ago. Maybe yeah. like maybe two, two years, years ago. Yeah. yeah. Make it all the time. Yep. I love that. And also the, I'm going to butcher the name, but it is like a rotisserie chicken mango slaw salad. Oh, I Peanut. love that one. Peanutty chicken salad, maybe? Maybe. Peanutty mango chicken salad. Mango. From mango. I always go to, go- yes. to my Gmail and type in mango. mango. Yes. Comes, so there's something mango in there. Yes. Make that all the I time, I love too. that one. Cabbage, mango, yes. a peanut dressing. Yep. Um, thank you so much for sharing your life with us and your, like, absolutely fascinating journey. The fact that you work with your husband from the same home with a child in the house is, like, so incredible. And you guys have, like, really figured it out. And I, I thank you for sharing all of that with us. Thank you so much. I'm so, so happy fun to, to have you and get to catch up. Come thank you on, for coming. I know. I feel like... I will say, I think about you like more than the average person should probably be thinking about another person, another person that they haven't seen in that makes fifteen me years. Happy. Like, I, I pop see up things in your that inbox. make me think of you, yeah. like pajamas, yeah. Luminu teeth strips, <laughs> like kids, boy, boy, mom stuff. Yeah. Like, I 
think about you like way more often than I you know. would ever I know. know. Well, back and at like, you. And like obviously every night when I cook and yes. all those things. So Yes. So well, back at you. you. So this was, I mean, I feel like we just saw each other in the lobby and that was like such a wonderful that was like a lover's hug that yeah. <laughs> we've been like torn apart from war for 15 years. Yeah. I think I held your face in both of my hands and I meant it. It's so good to see you. And thank you for all of your support. And I'm just so pumped to hear about all of your successes. So thank you. Same. Thank you. I love seeing you do what you do. I texted you the other day and said, I feel like you are doing no. things very differently. And thank you. I love to see it. Well, you are too. I'm so into you guys. (laughs) I'm so into you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) 